Ich bin Alex Olmer. mein Blog heißt iPhoneBlog.de und für Vodafone reise ich in Silicon Valley, das Zentrum der Zukunftstechnologien. Heute nehme ich euch mit an die Stanford-Universität. Das dortige Robotics Lab ist eine der ersten Anlaufstellen, wenn es um künstliche Intelligenz und die Zukunft von Mensch und Maschine geht. Well, welcome to the Robotics Lab. Uh, and uh, the Robotics Lab is part of the Department of Computer Science here at Stanford. I'm Usama Khatib, the director of the Robotics Lab. Thanks for inviting us. Um, here are a lot of robots around us. What is the difference between a robot and a machine? Most of uh, uh, manufacturing today involves a lot of uh, robots that are quite simple. Uh, they are pre-programmed, they perform uh, precisely, efficiently, very fast. Now, a robot, uh, in the sense of what we are working on, is um, a, ro a, a machine also. But this machine has sensors, uh, it can perceive its environment. And it can also uh, come up with the proper strategy and the plan to execute a task that is uh, that was not programmed ahead of time, and that is uh, uh, much more challenging because it is not done in a structured environment. So robots are systems that perceive the world and intelligently. Uh, respond by actions to deal with tasks. We define robotics as the connection, the intelligent connection between perception and action. Now, if we are talking about robots that are flying, flying robot, uh, uh, land robots, underwater robots that are just going to move and discover uh, the environment uh, without interacting physically with the environment, Uh, we are making a lot of progress in terms of the autonomy. So the robots are able to navigate and move and reach uh, their uh, goals. However, if we are talking about robots that are going to do things in the environment, it's a different question. That is, physical interaction with the environment is very, very challenging. And that is uh, where we start to see the need to, for human-robot interaction and for bringing the human and the robot to work together to, to create, uh, to create uh, what uh, we call uh, this synergy between the human and the machine. The human is working at very high level, but the human is going to need also to feel what the robot is doing. So what we do is to use uh, not only visual feedback to the human about the context, but also tactile feedback. So we use a haptic interaction. The human is going to be able to feel what the robot is doing. That will be connected back like wirelessly Just, or right. like, like on the fly, more or right. less. So in real time, the human is uh, going to be there interacting with the robot, uh, the human is going to have an interface. And this interface uh, brings uh, haptic interaction, visual feedback, a lot of information uh, from the cloud, whatever information is needed displayed to the human. And now the human is sitting comfortably and safely in a place uh, where at the same time, interacting with a robot that is going to places that are dangerous for the human or places that human cannot reach. So in the case of Ocean One, when the robot is reaching the bottom of the ocean, uh, the human is going to be able to feel uh, the contact the robot is making with the environment. And that is a very important aspect of making sure that the robot will receive the guidance Necessary to accomplish the task. Die Forschung in Stanford bringt Menschen und Roboter näher zusammen. Der Mensch steuert den Roboter nicht einfach nur, der Joystick überträgt Berührung. Es ist völlig abgefahren. Der Metallstift, den ich hier in der Hand halte, fühlt sich wie die Verlängerung meines Fingers an. Ich kratze über einen virtuellen Meeresgrund und fühle dabei jede Unebenheit in meinen Fingerspitzen. Das Gefühl, das man dadurch für den Roboter bekommt, ermöglicht eine viel intuitivere und präzisere Steuerung. Ich 
in science fiction, we know robots can be really, really, really bad and all of those things. Uh, it, it is some, somewhat uh, flattering uh, to see the public thinking that our robots are so small that they will take over the world. And in reality, uh, uh, these robots really need help from the human. Uh, they are incapable today to do uh, any major high-level decision. Wenn alles richtig funktioniert, nimmt derjenige, der steuert, den smarten Teil des Roboters gar nicht wahr. Die enorme Komplexität von Bewegung und Navigation wird so weit reduziert, dass die Bedienung eines Roboters immer einfacher wird. Der Mensch wächst über seine körperlichen Fähigkeiten hinaus. In the coming years we are going to see more and more assistance from the human to the robot and assistance from the robot to the human. The two brought together where the human sort of is bringing the brain and where the robot is bringing the muscles. We really believe that for the time being, as much as uh, humans need robots, uh, robots also need assistance from the human. Bis Roboter bei uns zu Hause ankommen, machen Forschung und Industrie wie so häufig den ersten Schritt in die Zukunft. Die Roboter, an denen hier geforscht wird, stellen wortwörtlich den verlängerten Arm des Menschen dar und werden in Zukunft unsere Arbeitswelt noch grundlegend revolutionieren. Vielen Dank an das gesamte Team vom Stanford Robotics Lab und an Vodafone.